So to put the battery in, we'll kind of go in the opposite steps we did before. We're gonna set the pack on our leg. And as we put this in, we need to make sure we install the green temperature sensor into the air shroud here. So what I like to do is just set the pack down on its tips and then take the temperature sensor and just slide it down into the right inside of this plastic air shroud. This way we can get an accurate intake air temperature. And with that done, we'll go ahead and pick up and place the feet back on that upper shelf. And you can see here that our power cord can now pull most of the way down like so. And you don't need to do it tight or anything and that way you'll have a cord here. Okay, now to connect everything back up, we're gonna first plug in the wire harness and the BCM harness now goes here and plugs in. And then we plug the MCM connectors back in. We plug the fan in. And now we're going to plug the red Anderson connector into the red Anderson connector. So that should be the MCM side of the orange wire plugs into the black wire on the temperature sensor harness. And then the white Anderson connector will plug into the white Anderson connector. So now the PDU side of the orange wire plugs into the red wire like that. And we're gonna go ahead and plug the three junction board connectors in like that. Okay, now we'll hook up the high current cables and we'll hook up the ground to the PDU unit. Next, we're gonna connect the HVDC. Okay, now we're gonna take the 10 foot harness that's gonna to go to the four by 20 display and we're going to route it and follow the wire harness as it goes down through the center console by the brake lever. So I've removed the two screws on the brake lever and then I need to remove the plastic housing for the brake lever. And then you can just take this connector and if you go down properly, it can take a little bit of trial and error, you'll see it come out. So once you get it to come through, you'll pull the entire cable out. Next we'll install the four 12 millimeter bolts that hold the enclosure in. If the bolt won't go in, you can take it back out and look down and see. In this case, I know that it needs to go that way slightly. Next, we'll make sure that this green wire is in fact still in the air shroud here. And if it's not, we can push it up more as needed. It doesn't need to be all the way down. Once we do that, we'll set the air shroud in and put the 10 millimeter specialty bolt back in that holds the air shroud in place. Then we'll add the rear support bar. As you do this, make sure the power cord comes on top of the bar. That way you won't have this sharp edge that the power cord can ride on. Now take the USB cable and plug it into the top of the LIBCM PCB. And we're gonna route that to the same spot we routed the 10 foot long cable for the four x 20 display. So we're gonna just drop through. And then finally we'll take and push the single tab here on the uh, IMA wire harness to reinstall that. And then we're gonna zip tie these two cables right here. Okay, so before we reinstall the cover, we should once again make sure everything's working correctly. So I've taken the four x 20 display and I've taken the cable that we routed through the carpet and I'm just gonna plug again, the red wire goes to VCC. And with this plugged in, I'm going to turn the IMA switch on. You should see the screen turn on and then off. And then if I turn on, you should see the display working properly here and you shouldn't get any IMA lights. And if that works, then we can install the cover and go for a test drive.
And before we tighten those bolts, remember we also need to reinstall these six bolts here to the middle mat. Now we can go ahead and tighten all those bolts up. Next, we'll verify that the IMA switch is off. Next, we're gonna reinstall the styrofoam covers. And I will point out that this foot right here and this wire will interfere with each other unless you pull the wire up like that. The foot's gonna go right here. And now we'll reinstall the aluminum cover. Next, we're going to install this shelf. Make sure that this edge goes under the carpet and that this goes on top of the standoff right here. That. Now we're going to reinstall the 10 millimeter bolts. Before you tighten those bolts all the way, we're gonna to stick to the three plastic screws in here. Now we can tighten these 10 millimeter bolts. And then we'll install the two plastic cleats. Then we'll take the middle mat carpet, fold it over, and then we'll stick the three plastic tabs in. Since we've replaced the nickel metal hydride battery, we need to cover the nickel metal hydride warning information with the label that comes in the kit and try and cover all three of the lines. You won't be able to get them all perfectly, but this is just so that anyone else who works on this in the future knows that it no longer has an OEM pack in it. Here's where the two cables come through the middle mat. Make sure they're both between these two tabs and then we're going to take the USB cable and just kind of put it over to the passenger side. And again, just make sure it stays behind this tab. The other cable is for the 4x20 display. And you can either route this underneath the carpet, which will take a little bit of effort because you'll need to remove the shifter console. Because this is just a prototype and it will be going away on the production versions, you can just uh, route it above the carpet. It's a little bit easier and make sure you put it on the passenger side. You don't want it routing into the driver's foot well where it could get entangled with the accelerator. Next, we're gonna take the center console and the center console has a tab here. Make sure this tab goes on the slot on the floor. There's a little bit of a trough here and you wanna make sure the USB cable comes out by that trough so you don't crush it. And then we'll go ahead and screw the two Phillips screws back in. Now we'll route the 4x20 cable underneath the shifter console here. Again, you can remove the console if you want, but since this is only a prototype cable, I wouldn't take the effort there. And if you look here again, we have VCC is red. Go ahead and straighten the pin if it got bent. And we're going to uh, plug the VCC into red. And then we're gonna take the cable and fold it over and take a zip tie and zip tie it through this hole. Next, we'll take the backing off of this double-sided adhesive, and then we're gonna take the connector and make it go to the left side. And then we're going to stick it on this ridge here, so make sure there's no dust on that ridge. And then just take and stick the screen on there and just push down on it, like that. Again, this is a prototype part. It will eventually go away, so you don't need to permanently install it. And then you can take any extra cord and just kind of push it behind the console here. Don't kink this cord though. And with that, we can turn the IMA switch on. You should see the screen turn on and then off again. 
And then if you turn the key on, you should see uh, the data values here for LIBCM. Now, if when you turn this on, the delta is very large, you're gonna wanna grid charge this. If the delta is more than about 10 millivolts, so 0 0.01 volts, um, you're gonna wanna grid charge this. And the balancing process is very slow, so it could take a while if you have, say, one 18S pack at 3.8 volts per cell and one of them at 3.6 volts. That would take a couple days to balance. You can drive it not unbalanced, but you're gonna have a very, very small range. Now we need to install the eight millimeter bolt that we took out here by the switch. To do that, the switch has to be off. And then you just put this in. You might need to push down on the cover to get the hole to line up. Turn the switch back on, put this red cover on. And now we'll reinstall the IMA switch cover. And finally, we'll reinstall these plastic panels on either side. And then we'll throw the carpet back on and that's it.